Hey guys, so let's talk about angle relationships and I highly recommend that you get the, the guided notes to go alongside this lesson. So, um, okay, so let's first talk about vertical angles. So these are just angles with equal measure, but we make them like this. So you can like cross two lines. So these two angles, these are called vertical angles and they are also equal in measure as are these, okay? So remember that. Now let's talk about transversal lines. Let's review what this is. So to create a transversal line, what you have to do is you have to start with two parallel lines and then you draw a line through them and that's what's known as the transversal line. Okay, so let's label and note some relationships that come from this situation because there's actually quite a few things that come out of, of this relationship. Okay, so I'm gonna label the four sides as shown and if you're if you're taking notes, you probably have to pause the video just to kind of write some of this stuff down. Um, okay. So first pair, all right, so three and six and four and five. So these are what are known as alternate interior angles and then each pair has equal angle measure. So three and six, these are equal in measure as are four and five. Okay, so that's the first pair. The next pair is um, one and eight and two and seven, so I've got them circled. These are alternate exterior angles and each pair has equal angle measures. So one and eight are the same and two and seven are the same. Again, pause the video if you, you need to write any of this down. Okay, um, then we also have interior angles. So these are angles um, that are on the same side of the transversal. And the thing that's special about these is if you were to add these up, these will add up to 180 degrees. This also works for three and five, so um, same same relationship. And then we have corresponding angles, so like two and six. So just kind of note like where the placement is here. So these are also equal angles to one another as would be one and five, also three and seven, and also four and eight. So if you understand these relationships, then you can answer a lot of other questions about these types of problems. So what I have here is I have an example where we're gonna find the angle measures for angles one, two, three, and four. So I've given you one angle measure and we have to find all the others. So you might wanna pause the video um, and you know just maybe take a second to take this all in. If you feel like you know this, I'd highly recommend pausing the video and seeing if you can do it on your own and then, and then watch. Okay, so there's there's lots of different ways that you can approach this, honestly. So one one other way, and this is kind of a, a review, another thing you could kind of think of here. So even these two angles, you know something about these two too, is right? So these two would have to equal 180. So I've, I've called this, instead of the calling this one, because I don't want to confuse it as a number, I've denoted it as x sub one, so this refers to that angle. So just if I were to solve for this, um, I would get that that first angle is 50 degrees. And really by knowing those two angles, you really know everything else. So this one is 50 and then that is gonna transfer. So using vertical angles, we can also say that two is gonna be 50 degrees. And then also three is 50 degrees using what we know about alternate exterior angles um, or another measure. If you, like, There's multiple ways you can think about why three is 50, but three is also 50 and then using alternate exterior angles, I would know that four is 130. So you just wanna be, you know, kind of familiar with like how these relationships work out. I have a harder one here. So another example. So what I want you to do is once again, just pause the video here, try this one out, just take your time and then hit play when you think you've figured it out. Okay, so in this case, there's just there's lots of ways to approach this. I'm gonna show you one way that I thought of this, but if you went a different way and got the same numbers, that's totally fine. There's more than one way to approach these. Um, okay, so the one thing I think about, this is angle two, this is angle four. I know that these two things are equal. So I can just actually go ahead and set those equal to one another and solve. So if I do that, I'm gonna get that X will ultimately be equal to 15 degrees because I can subtract the X's off and subtract the five off and I get 15 degrees. So then if I just continue on with that, um, so then this angle, I take the 15 plus the 20, that will give me 35. And then because I know now two, I know that's also equal to four. And then I know that 
this third angle, so this angle plus this angle has to equal 180, so that I can just take this 180 minus the 35 to get the other angle measure, which would be 145. And then because these are where they are placed, they, they're like corresponding, so that's also gonna be the angle of measure one. So once you kind of get one of these, um, you, you can you know, kind of piece out the rest and, and use a lot of different ways to, to go about the logic. And so otherwise, um, yeah, this is a short video just kind of going through those ideas. So that's all I've got for you guys in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.